Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create a sand shader. Uh, this shader is good for probably medium to long shots. Uh, if you're doing close-ups, you probably want to simulate the sand um, as particles with either XGen or Houdini. Uh, but for this one, I'm just going to use a shader um, and it's, it doesn't look too bad um, even if you start to get a little bit close. It just sort of depend on what you're going for so far as realism goes. So to do this, we're going to start off by creating a polyplane and we are going to increase the scale to be 24 by 24 and that way we can remove that. The um, subdivision width and height, we're going to set to 250. So it's going to be very high resolution. It's currently at uh, 63,000 verts. So um, consider that this may slow down your computer a little bit. Um, also worth mentioning is I'm going to use the Hot Ocean Deformer for this. I've already got a tutorial on how to install that, so I'm not going to go through that again. I'll leave a link uh, down below for how to do that. So um, we're just going to select a point in the middle and we will um, hit B to soft select. And then I'm just going to scale that a little bit so I can make a nice little hill like so. And now we're going to apply our hot ocean deformer to it. Uh, to do so, we're just going to type in in the mal um, string field below deformer dash type um, hot ocean deformer semicolon, and that will give us that deformation. Now we can see that in the attribute editor for the plane currently has uh, this. Now all these settings are going to be relative to your scale for whatever geometry you're using. Um, I've already done it with this particular size thing, so if you're following along you can get an idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to start by changing the global scale to be 0.04. Um, it's just going to give me re more repetitions as you can see there. Resolution, uh, we can keep it at a low resolution and increase it as um, necessary. Uh, that's just going to give you a better, obviously, resolution. Um, and less blurriness between the the waves essentially uh, size I'll keep it 200 we wind speed I'm going to reduce to 2 which will make the waves a bit more choppy uh, wave height I'll increase to 3 and shortest wave I will put, set to 0.05 uh, maybe I'll set to 1 choppiness uh, I'll reduce to 0.1 damp reflections I set to 1 and wind align, this is going to give me nice lines of uh, waves here. So I'm just going to set that up to maybe 20. So you see we get these nice consistent sort of waves, which are essentially our sand dunes. Um, sand dunes and water kind of tend to look a little bit similar because they are obviously affected by wind uh, in the same way. So it's good to be able to use something like this just to create a quick def uh, bit of deformation. Now that we've got those basic um, parameters in, you can adjust your, say, wave height as you would like. Um, choppiness, you can sort of get it to pinch the waves a bit. So if you want sort of something more like that, you can get that sort of effect. And then if you're wanting more repeats, you need to start looking at your ocean size. So if I reduce that to 100, you can see how it sort of affects it like so. And also this is going to be dependent on your resolution. So you may need to go to a high resolution. Um, that is the only problem with using this method is that it's going to start to slow down your computer um, because you're actually doing all this deformation um, pre-render. Whereas if you were just using a displacement shader, it would obviously not have an impact while you're working on it. The disadvantage being that you'd have to be rendering to see what's going on. So I'm going to use something like that. We're going to put some lights in. Um, so I'm just going to use an HDRI to begin with. I'm just going to use a nice cloudy sky. So if we uh, do a render, you can see that I've got this sort of nice cloudy sky above, which is going to tint our um, surface nicely. Um, also, one thing that worth mentioning is the wind speed will smooth out your dunes. So if you want more rolling sort of dunes, you can do that with the wind speed by increasing it. You can see it does that like that. And then you can decrease it down to be like quite low if you want very ripply sort of um, uh, dunes. So maybe make that 
two and that should be okay. We're also going to put in a directional light by right clicking on the light and uh, hitting distant. And this is just going to act as our sun. Let's find the sun in the HDRI. That looks like it over there. So we'll put that on the same side. This is just to increase that directional light. Um, the position of this light doesn't matter because it's coming from a world direction rather than a specific vector. All right, let's get some shaders down. So we will select the Pixar surface shader and in the hyper shader editor, which is here, I've got it docked to the right hand side. Yours might pop up over the top. If you want it to be docked, you can just drag it onto the right hand side there like so. So what we need to do is create a very noisy um, surface to simulate the um, all the little sand particles. So we're going to do that with a Voronoise. So we set tab type Voronoise and that will bring it up there and we can plug that into the diffuse color to begin with. We'll also need a manifold to control the size and the overall size of the Voronoise. So it's just a PXR manifold 2D because it's a 2D image and we'll run the result into the manifold. Now if we run the render, all right so let's uh, increase the frequency of our raw noise. Actually, we might need to zoom out. I've uh, put the ad viewer on the left hand side there. So I can just move this camera out a little bit easier. Zoom it way out so we get an indication of the scale of our Vora noise. Um, scale is not enough, so let's change its scale to be say 20 by 20. We're starting to see some, um, some of the noise there. So frequency will uh, increase to 10. Uh, we will have the octaves very high okay so we're seeing lots of dots but we're not seeing uh, enough repetition so let's increase this quite a bit so 200 and now we're seeing quite a bit of repetition so if we zoom in we should be able to see the surface there has got all these nice little dots um, which can act as our um, sand particles. So you'll need to increase this or decrease this as you see necessary for the size of your geometry. That looks okay for now. We need to, we may need to adjust that further um, as we go along, but we'll keep it like that for the moment. So we're getting a nice bit of variation there in the surface. Um, we also need some color because obviously sand isn't black and white. So we'll use a PXR blend. And we'll run the Voronoise into the top and into the bottom color we will use a sand color. I've obviously been working on this already so we'll get a nice um, desaturated yellow there. And then run the Pixar Blend result RGB into the diffuse color. And we want to change the Pixar Blend operation to be multiply. So then when we render we get more of this effect. Now this is okay, uh, that sand does tend to have some specularity. We can use our Voronoise to affect that. So we can run the result F of the Voronoise into our specular, f uh, sorry, the result RGB into our specular face color. And we can start to see some specularity. However, it is very specular. Um, so what we'll need to do is increase our roughness and maybe use a remap just to adjust the overall intensity of that specularity. So now we can reduce the output max down. So the maximum amount of specularity is adjusted. And then we can use the roughness to increase or decrease that. And by using the Voronoise, um, only the highlighted areas, the white areas will be specular, um, transitioning into the darker areas, which will have low specular. We can also use the roughness in our diffuse to give us a bit more diffusion. So by combining that with the specularity, we actually get quite a nice result quickly. Um, I'm not particularly happy with the way those um, sand dunes are looking at the moment, so I'm just going to make a quick adjustment. I realized just after looking at this that I didn't uh, add smooth subdivisions to this, so we can do that um, very easily by selecting your um, hill geometry and going into the attribute editor and then finding the plane shape, the shape node. 
Um, and scrolling down until we get to subdivision scheme and add and change that to Catmull Clark. So now when you render, you can see that's what it looks like there, pre um, subdivision. And that's what it looks like post subdivision. So um, much nicer, obviously, um, much smoother, which is what I was intending in the first place. <laughs> All right, that's a little closer to what I want. Um, still getting some darker areas that I wouldn't really like to see, but this will this will do for now. All right, so we can really see the um, pattern there. Um, but what you'll know, notice is that the overall um, color variation sort of is non-existent. We're only getting a transition from the darker yellow to the lighter yellow. So we actually want some variety in the tone. So we can do that. And I'll just do this with a new plane, just so we can see it a little bit easier. All right, so that is our texture there. And what we want to do is introduce um, a variety of colors. We can do this with a ramp very easily. So we'll use a Pixar ramp. And to show you how this is going to work, I'll just run the result RGB into the diffuse color to begin with. And then we're going to select, you can select as many colors as you want. I'm just going to use three for the moment. And I'm going to set the uh, interpolation to uh, constant. And then I'll select three different yellowish tones of um, varying color and um, value. And then I'll just move those so we sort of get a roughly equi uh, equal amount of each on that ramp there. So um, at the moment, if I render this, what we'll see is is three colors like that. So I want to randomize where those colors are with another Voronoise. You could use the existing one that you've got. I'm going to use a new one. I'm just going to run the result F into the spline map and then it's going to say, hey, look at this Pixar uh, Voronoise and use the values to determine um, where those colors should be appearing. So now as we increase the frequency, you'll start to see the different colors and that's based on the the value of the um, Voronoi so it's value between 0 and 1. We can either use frequency to increase it or use another manifold. I'm going to use the manifold here. Let's use Pixar manifold and run the result into the manifold of that new Voronoi that we've created. You can um, reduce the smoothness to get more of a unusual effect. Okay so we've got a nice variety of tones. We can scale that up so we get a high frequency i might use 20. and now if we zoom in we'll see that we've got a nice variety of colors so what we can do now is instead of using um in our blend here we've just got the static color we'll actually use this ramp and plug it into the input which is the bottom color and then run that result RGB into the diffuse color. So now when we render, we get a nice variety. So we'll uh, bring back our hill. So looking at it now, I'm thinking that maybe the um, initial noise needs to be increased to a higher frequency. So now we get a nice variety and as we've increased that frequency, we may need to increase the frequency of the multiplied um, color texture. So we'll just increase that to 50 by 50, perhaps. Yep, something like that. So you get a nice little variety of color. It's not a huge, huge difference that it makes, but it will um, increase the variety, which does increase the realism. Further than this, you could use a bit of bump mapping, but I think with this sort of thing, it's sort of going to give you diminishing returns because the amount of noise that is in there and the small amount of bump mapping that you would have to use. But, you know, for a close up, possibly you want to use some bump mapping, um, which could easily be done if you want to have a look with the Vora noise. We'll just pump, uh, plug that into a bump, picks up bump, run the result N into a bump and the result F into a input bump. Um, now that Voronoise appears to not have nearly enough repetition to get the resolution that we'd need for the bump map to look accurate. And it is going to start to mess with your normals at very small increments, but what if we... I think with a um, very, very small amount of bump mapping, um, 
you could get a nice result. You might want to use a separate Voronoise with a much higher um, repetition or frequency. Yeah, just having a look here, I would say maybe if you use a separate Voronoise with a really high frequency and a really um, high repetition, you might get sort of the results you want. I think it's honestly diminishing returns though at this amount of uh, repetitions, whereas the texture is pretty much going to take care of most of it. But yeah, this will just all depend on your shot. Um, so take all of this with a um, grain of salt, obviously, for what you're doing. But um, for setting up a, a little bit of background sand or something that's sort of at about from eye level to the ground, you'd probably be okay with something like this, just as a even as just as a texture. So I hope that help, helped. This was a um, request from subscriber. Um, who asked me about this. I'd done a tutorial about five years ago and this is probably a slightly better update. Um, like I said, if you're looking for something a little bit more detailed, I would start considering to do, start consider doing something with XGen or Houdini. My personally, I'd probably just use Houdini. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.